Hi everyone, today uh, we are going to discuss a paper uh, called 3D Gaussian Spreading for uh, Real-Time Radiance Field Rendering. And uh, this paper was published like uh, three weeks ago and it already has about 2K likes on GitHub. So um, yeah, it's quite popular. And let's find out uh, what it is about and whether it it's worth such uh, attention. So uh, this paper solves the task of novel view synthesis for an unseen camera view. And it becomes quite trending in the world of 3D computer vision. And uh, do not confuse it with uh, reconstruction. I would rather uh, call it an uh, alternative representation of 3D information compared to um, usual for us meshes or point clouds. Uh, however, the uh, common problem for most of uh, existing solutions is uh, inability to combine these three criteria at once, namely competitive training time, uh, real-time rendering, and high quality for, uh, let's say, for full HD resolution. And as you might guess, uh, 3D Gaussian splitting is a new solution which achieves a sort of trade-off of all these criteria. Um, you might be guessing if it's another nerf, and um, I will say no, but um, it has a similar idea for the view synthesis. So understanding uh, the 3D Gaussian splitting is uh, going to be much, much easier uh, looking through the, the perspective of NERF. But um, again, this review is not about NERF. And uh, by the way, we already had a great one made by uh, Oleksii Grechnyuk. So here is just a short recap. Uh, so NERF is a kind of sparse voxel representation of a 3D scene and all training camera views are ray mesh that is uh, sampling 3D points um, with a certain step along all the camera rates. And all these 3D points have um, color and opacity. And depending on the 3D point position and the camera direction through which you observe this point, uh, color and opacity values differ. So the relation is uh, described with a function which is um, estimated with multi-layer perceptron. And the supervision here comes with rendering. Uh, once you project back this 3D voxel representation onto the image plane and accumulate uh, color and opacity along each ray, you end up with, uh, with an image render that is compared to ground truth one. And this whole rendering procedure is differentiable such that uh, gradients here, they actually learn this function. So um, NERF's interpretation has some drawbacks, which uh, let's say, inspired authors to rebuild the, the whole idea with another scene reconstruction, which would utilize 3D Gaussians instead of voxels. Um, and in simpler form, imagine a, a scene where all entities are presented with ellipsoids of various shapes, uh, sizes, colors, and opacity. And these ellipsoids are 3D Gaussians. And there is a key innovation for this, for the task of novel view synthesis. Um, however, this representation isn't novel in 3D computer graphics. So the basic flow is very uh, similar, similar to NERF, namely um, initialize a scene representation, but with 3D Gaussians then uh, render a scene from camera view that is uh, project and rasterize. Um, and um, 
obtain, obtain the image and compare it with the ground truth one. And then back propagate gradients to, to the scene representation. And this pipeline visualization looks unclear, so let's deal with everything in order and then get back to it again. So initialization, um, at the very beginning, we have a set of images of a static scene. And firstly, we use structure for motion to calibrate cameras and um, mainly obtain a sparse set of 3D points. Then they um, randomly sample 3D Gaussians within these points. So it looks like a bunch of random blobs with random shapes in 3D. And these Gaussians are defined by, I mean, there is uh, actually a position of a 3D Gaussian in the world space, a covariance matrix, and it simply represents uh, a shapes a shape of this uh, ellipsoid along all three axes. Uh, the color is represented via spherical harmonics and um, please don't ask me about them. Uh, <laughs> that's a mess we don't need to dive into. And of course, um, the opacity of this blob, which determines uh, how visible this ellipsoid is. But um, in fact, they weren't using a direct definition of a covariance matrix because uh, these matrices have physical meaning only if they are positive, semi-definite. Therefore, they uh, replaced um, it with a configuration of an ellipsoid. So um, basically, they could call it an ellipsoid splitting, but we have 3D Gaussians that obviously sounds smarter. Then comes the rendering part, which lies in projection and rasterization. Um, and as I said before, 3D Gaussians um, isn't something novel in computer graphics. So the projection equation was described like um, 22 years ago. And I will not stop there. Let's just um, take it as given. More attention should be paid to differentiable rasterization, which is a key to their efficiency. So let's dive into this algorithm. Uh, firstly, we collect, uh, okay, we, we collect uh, 3D Gaussians that are visible through, through the camera view first view and project them. Uh, and then we um, split the screen into a grid of tiles. And, and then <laughs> we uh, assign um, an ID to each visible Gaussian. And this ID is very important because it encodes information about both uh, view space depth of a Gaussian and tile ID for which it's visible. So then we having such uh, informa informative IDs, we simply sort Gaussians based on them. And then each tile is processed in parallel. It gets an associated list of sorted Gaussians and accumulates color and um, a positive values for each pixel. Uh, each pixel. So uh, what's uh, the point here? Instead of sorting primitives for um, um, for a pixel uh, as the previous alpha solutions do, they pre-sort it for an entire image. So that is the reason why it's faster. And also such a visualizer allows um, efficient backpropagation. That is a reason for um, fast training. And the remaining uh, crucial part that helps to achieve detailed view synthesis is adaptive control of Gaussians. Uh, in fact, the number of Gaussians isn't limited. There is um, another optimization problem to address. Uh, so 
while optimizing um, shape uh, and position um, of Gaussian, there may be two cases, under and over reconstructions. And the cool thing is both cases have a large view space positional gradients, which helps to determine them, to identify, yeah, identify them. Uh, in order to deal with these cases, for under reconstruction, they just um, they just call Gaussians, and for over reconstructed regions, they just split them. Very simple. There are also some uh, tricks to have a better control over the number of these Gaussians. That is obvious too. So finally, <clears throat> let's have um, a look at the figure again to summarize knowledge on each individual part. So first, we initialize a random set of Gaussians with SFM points to represent um, a 3D scene. Then we project them onto an image plane with a given camera view. And then we collect all pixel colors with this differentiable tile rasterization that is performed really quickly with the GPU. It gives us the image, once we have it, we, compute, uh, we compare it with the ground truth one uh, and calculate the loss. The loss is pretty simple. It combines uh, L1 loss and DSSM loss, which is about um, images similarity. So then we chain rule all the way back to 3D Gaussians. Uh, yeah, so based on this loss, 3D Gaussian parameters, namely position, covariance, quaternion, and spherical harmonics, there is a color with uh, opacity. They are learned and changed to represent a scene. Uh, finally, we are ready to dive into the presentation of results and <clears throat> Everything is implemented with Python and PyTorch. Uh, they also wrote custom CUDA kernels for rasterization. There is probably a key contribution for its optimization because um, your algorithm is worth nothing if it can be um, efficiently run on the hardware, right? So what about metrics? The table and plots uh, represent the same information. Uh, here's 3D Gaussian splitting either beats other approaches or achieves similar results, but with much, much higher FPS and less expensive training. But uh, authors aren't really proud of the memory cost because they don't mention it at all. But in fact, uh, it requires significantly um, higher memory capacity than other approaches. Uh, they also tested the following aspects of algorithm. Initialization with uh, SFM. Here they proved that using positions and covariances within the SFM points is important rather than just randomly sample them in space. Uh, then we have uh, densification strategies. Here they proved again a uh, necessity to, for, um, for splitting and cloning um, this over and under reconstructed regions. And uh, number of splits uh, to have gradients. Here they verified uh, they should apply gradients to all points while uh, uh, alpha blending uh, in the rasterization instead of n top closest Gaussians uh, to the image plane. So that results in uh, more realistic outputs. And conclusions, finally, uh, this paper presents a solution for the novel view synthesis task, 
which lies uh, mostly in representing a scene with 3D Gaussians. Um, such scene representation involves um, another differentiable rasterization that is faster for both inference and backpropagation. But in fact, it was hardly optimized for the GPU, uh, which helped achieve such performance. And in addition, it has a higher memory cost um, compared to other approaches. So um, overall, 3D Gaussian splitting achieves um, a trade-off between real-time rendering, high quality uh, for high resolution, and relatively time-efficient training. Uh, and at the end, some uh, personal thoughts. Uh, I feel like this paper hasn't yet uh, revealed its full potential. Uh, and we will see more in this field, but obviously they already have uh, amazing results. Uh, at the same time, I think it's um, a good inspiration to look, uh, to look for alternative uh, representation of uh, 3D scene. So thank you for your attention.